Brigade presents The Realty Debate, powered by Reliance Home Finance with Manisha Natarajan. After a wait of 13 years, the Goods and Services Tax Bill or GST Bill has been finally passed by a unanimous vote in the Rajya Sabha. This is undoubtedly the biggest reform in India's indirect tax structure since the economy began to be opened up 25 years ago. Simply put, what will this do? It will turn India into a common market leading to greater ease of doing business and big savings in logistics cost or cost of moving goods and services from one state to another. And this will happen for companies across all sectors. How will it specifically impact real estate and your cost of home in India? Well, that's what we'll thrash out on the Realty Debate today. Welcome everyone and meet my panel. Rohit Poddar, Managing Director, Poddar Housing and Development Limited. Also with us here in the Delhi studio, Prashant Solomon, MD Tintels India and Treasurer of Kridai NCR. We have with us Mahesh Jaisi, partner of BMR and Associates, Abhinav Joshi, head of research India CBRE South Asia, and Nihal Kothari, executive director Khetan and Co, and chairman National Council on Indirect Taxes. So, a veteran. So, Mr. Kothari, I think I am going to come to you, sir, because I, nobody has seen the evolution, the pains behind the passage of this bill closer than you, sir. Truly a landmark move, isn't it, to make India a single economic entity? Yeah, it's a very long journey of nine years uh, since that whole debate started on GST. And a lot of work has gone behind. But now finally we seeing the uh, efforts which have been made now giving a fruit. So it will really make India a true one common market which is now fragmented uh, in a 29 state market because of the tax barrier created in the form of entry tax in the form of the CST and also credit restriction when the goods move from one state to another. So now all these barriers when go, then you have a free movement of goods which itself will bring efficiency in the supply chain. It will bring efficiency in the production cost because you can consolidate and have an economy of scale. And therefore it is going to increase not only GDP but also expansion of the trade and industry. And moreover, the manufacturing in India, which was facing the uh, cascading effect of tax, means tax on the tax, and right. that was built into the cost. And therefore, it was artificially increasing the cost of product. That will go down, and therefore, in general, the efficiency will give a benefit, plus this uh, tax, which was embedded into cost, which will give a benefit to the manufacturing sector. Okay, so, so, so all in all, move plus, all in yeah, all plus the simplicity. Very, yeah. absolutely. All in all, a really positive move. I think, Mahesh Jaising, the big question that now everyone has started debating is, is the deadline of 1st April 2017, which the FM is very gungo about, doable, or is it wildly optimistic? I mean, already it's, it's, it's been less than 24 hours, and we are hearing from several experts that, look, don't even expect it before maybe 2018, mid, late, there are all sorts of uh, optimistic and pessimistic guesses. What do you think? Right. No, I think uh, uh, there is a lot of ground to cover. So there are really two aspects to uh, the April 2017 deadline. One is from a legislative perspective. Would the machinery uh, be you know, able to deliver a GST law and the rules by March 31? Mm -hmm. Give and take, there is a possibility that all of that may happen in nick of time by March. But the larger question is, is if we find the, if we get the final GST bills and the rules and regulations only by January and February, is that really enough time for industry to gear itself up for this, like you said, the landmark reform and the one of its kind and the largest reform in indirect tax history? So I'm uh, more skeptical on the latter rather than the ability of the government to put that together. Mm -hmm. Because from the government's end, uh, if we recall about mid of June, we had a model GST law. Right. which is pretty much out in the domain, but I think there's a lot of legislative ground to be covered as well. So, so my bet would be April 17 is very tough. So you're saying that, I mean, on where do you think is the biggest challenge, legislative or, or the operational procedures which need to be set up? And then, of course, there's consensus building. But if you were to take these three aspects and say that what would be harder, operational aspects or the legislative aspects? I think it's the operational aspects because uh, what we uh, what has not caught as much attention uh, in the last 24 hours and whenever the GST gets debated is the impact of GST on the services sector. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, services today is very simply taxed at one service tax for a pan india operation of a company and therefore one doesn't need to figure out where that particular service is performed within which state but under gst we are going to have a state level gst and therefore it's a paradigm shift of taxation of services from a pan india basis to a state level basis so i think the operational challenge for service entities to be able to uh, you know get their uh, even figure out what should be the right tax on a contract should a contract be sliced and diced these are things that they uh, will take a lot of time and also for product companies while the law per se is not going to be very complicated to interpret the lot of ground needs to be covered for them to be it compliant to be able to generate invoices in the format that the rules and regulations require and for which i guess the industry clearly needs few months if not more to be able to have the final draft available for them to take implementation steps and do erp changes and process changes so absolutely so first you need the final draft and and then you need to start you know complying your uh, back offices and it practices to it okay now let's move our focus this was the overview let's move the focus to real estate now how will gst impact real estate there are three components essentially to real estate if you see one is land which is what you will buy then there are under construction flats or property which in india is also bought both whether it's residential or commercial and finally there's a fully constructed house or a fully constructed commercial or office space that is also bought so let's let's try and divide our discussion within these three parameters to keep it simple so so i'm going to start with land and i think let's go to abhinav abhinav i mean i'll go to the developers later because i'm sure they'll have a lot to say but but tell me there's there's a lot of gray when it comes to land per se and gst yeah. how will it get treated uh i think you know land is a very very gray subject as you rightly said uh gst as overall as a legislation is very unclear on that front mm -hmm. uh it says more about you know completed properties and under construction properties and you know because it tries to define uh real estate from the perspective of goods and services and goods it defines as uh, you know anything that's movable mm -hmm. so from that perspective yes there is lack of clarity i think uh, what the real estate sector is really expecting is the government to move ahead and uh, you know make some reforms and implement the land acquisition bill i i doubt that gst overall will have a you know any big impact as far as a land acquisition is concerned which is a main main concern of the real estate sector as of now okay so the so land is a big question mark let's we'll go step by step let's just stick to land rohit poddar what i mean right now when you acquire land for any project you essentially just pay a stamp duty isn't it what are the what are the kind of taxes that you pay on it and and what do you think is likely to happen well we primarily buy uh, agricultural land uh, you know against an agreement for sale and part of attorney sort of agreement mm -hmm. uh, i don't actually foresee any change in that okay. uh, going forward this fm has been very clear yesterday that stamp and registration will be over and above the gst amounts so i don't think there will be any significant change in how land is actually treated in the way we actually buy land okay <clears throat> uh, from a construction perspective i think input costs will actually go down but uh, there are a lot of other issues that are there that you know in the in a matter of this nature that you know the devil is always in the detail okay so uh, we have to okay. basically wait and see what the clarifications happen over the next few days and then be aggressive as a as an industry to basically address those issues so that we actually you know it doesn't affect us or the home buyer uh, in any way shape or form adversely they should actually save money all right uh, i i think there'll be some maybe some sort of possibility of local municipalities raising taxes uh, because they lost they lose out on cess and other things like that so maybe other other taxes will actually go up maybe in a creeping way over the next few years so so still still not very clear but prashant solomon what do you think i mean there are these many arguments that i've read that uh, by keeping land out of gst and now that rohit has said that if him clearly said that you know nothing will happen to land you, it it continues to be a state subject and you will continue to pay the same stamp duty that you were earlier on it so the the one of the main ideas behind gst was to actually clean up the economy also of black money and that's a big problem at the land level isn't it yeah i think that uh, by introducing gst it's a very positive step that our parliament has taken in the right direction of making business doing business in india very easy 
and definitely by eliminating the multiple taxes that we have to pay as developers and in all in different industries as well mm -hmm. it is going to add a lot to transparency which is a very good thing and uh, it will make it, it will make compliance with taxes a lot easier okay so definitely i think uh, and and another aspect is that people will be more open to paying taxes and i think you're going to see a reduction in tax evasion as well mm -hmm. which uh, also addresses what you just asked about the black money part so i think yes overall it's a very positive uh, step in the right direction mm -hmm. particularly for land do you think that it's okay for it to be outside of gst really there was nothing that the government could have done well uh, you know i i don't know if there's anything that the government could have done or not but definitely from from the way i see it uh, mm -hmm. uh, def, uh, gst is not going to have any in impact whatsoever in terms of land as we as we heard uh, earlier that the stamp duty part which is which is one of the main taxes that is paid on land transactions is also out of the ambit of gst mm -hmm. and uh, stamp duty has not been subsumed along with the other taxes so okay. i don't think there's really uh, as of right now any change in terms of acquisition of land okay. or taxation for or land tax. yeah okay uh, mr nihal kothari the states obviously have wanted and want to keep land excluded from gst but if i look at examples like australia canada singapore new zealand gst is applied on land and they are also subject to other land transaction charges my question to you is will exclusion of land lead to cascading of taxes and increase in the cost is is that a possibility Yeah, initially when the discussion taken place in 13th Finance Commission, it was agreed that all taxes, including stamp duty and a land transaction, should be part of the GST. But later on, government thought that it is not a right time; we should go in its uh, phases, and therefore, land and immovable property has been kept out of the GST. Now, if you look at the Constitution Amendment Bill, uh, there the, uh, the entry relating to the stamp duty has been kept out. It means that it is going to continue. as far as the land uh, valuation is concerned see the uh, while the constitution is silent what it says is that anything which is not goods is a considered as a service so whether the transaction in the land whether it is a service uh, the draft gst bill which has been uh, put for public discussion mm -hmm. where it says ke the, the definition of service which says ke anything which is not goods other than the money transaction and uh, and employee, employee transaction but uh, includes the works contract it is silent on the land so unless the clarification come that the land will be excluded either in the value of even the development contract like the development contract it says ke transaction value right. now it doesn't say earlier the abatement was given there is no abatement as far as now is concerned they have not defined it may come later on okay. so as of now there is a gray area as to whether land is included in the value of transaction or not and that is very important to bring it because if the stamp duty is kept out the land also should be kept out of the valuation of any uh, development of the uh, property yeah absolutely otherwise it will lead to an increase in cost uh, mahesh i think don't you don't you agree with that you need a lot of clarity yes, i do mm -hmm. i do but i think uh, i mean i'm not too worried about the clarity emerging because okay. land is is meant to be outside the gst I think there are a couple of aspects that we need to be mindful of. Today, real estate projects are typically done with a joint development agreement format, uh, so that because when you identify a landowner and a developer, they want to do a project together, one does not go through the buy sell at some occasions where the developer does not buy the land and thereafter sell the apartments uh, to individuals like you and me with the undivided share. It's done under the joint development agreement. while there are business reasons for them to do so uh, taxes has also been one of the reason in the past and under gst as well we will have the stamp duty going in parallel with the gst okay. so i would say that that's point 1 point 2 is that the, the sheer fact that there are two elements of tax would mean that if uh, to make it simple that if uh, we're looking at an apartment that is rupees 5000 a square feet uh even now when you get into the paperwork and others there's this one portion that's attributed to the land and another portion that's attributed to the construction by the sheer design of land being outside the net of gst mm -hmm. you will continue to have a split in value issues that will come up and also you will have joint development agreements again sort of being part on the cost 
uh, under GST as well. Okay. So, it's a complicated issue. Rohit Bodar, uh, is, is it a concern uh, for you or, or you're comfortable with the fact that land's kept out of it and, I mean, so your taxation actually starts only or GST starts affecting real estate only for under construction property because there I think a home buyer needs to pay right now both service tax and VAT. That's right. I mean, I think, I think, I think we're quite uh, clear also on the subject that land should be kept out uh, because of the fact also that you have an additional charge for stamp and registration of the flats as well, which as Mr. Kothari said earlier was actually originally a part of the GST uh, conceptually, which now it's been kept out of. Um, so I think that going forward, uh, we're um, quite confident that land will be kept out of the purview and that construction basically will be kept in, obviously. Mahesh right. so Jaisingh is already saying it's not such a big deal. I think Abhinav Yoshi, come in here and tell me the, the, the biggest concern that I've been hearing from developers is that there's just too much taxation in real estate. I mean, uh, taxes add up to almost 30 to 40 percent of a flat cost. Now, the larger question, because a lot of these nitty-gritties are fairly hard for a viewer to understand and get, I think the larger answer that they want is uh, both on the behalf of the industry and for a buyer, will that tax burden get reduced and will then that get passed on as maybe cheaper homes? You know, that entirely depends on the fine print mm -hmm. and on the implementation of the bill and more importantly, I think most importantly, on the exact rate that's decided. So as of now, all the indirect taxes put together, they come somewhere around 22 to 25 percent. So obviously, the final GST rate has to be lower than that. Okay. In case that happens, then I think, yes, in the longer term, we can see developers transferring some of their, uh, some of that advantage onto uh, end users. But again, you know, entirely depends on what the final rate is. And that's, I think, across industries, which also includes real estate. Uh, so, you know, what we have been propagating uh, and what, you know, we are in line with what the uh, industry has been saying otherwise and what's coming from the government is also that somewhere around 17 to 18 percent is something which is going to be within an acceptable range. Wow, 18 percent would be great. <laughs> we are just hoping it doesn't go higher. Prashant Solomon, that's one of the big concerns, isn't it? I don't know whether the industry, real estate per se, is looking into it, but they're saying my long-term impact is all positive, but in the short term, GST could actually lead to inflationary uh, pressures, and that's just not at all good for an industry which is struggling to sell homes at even or offload inventory at the current price level. Yeah, I agree with you, Manisha. You know, there's another aspect that I would like to highlight here. See, in a real estate project, unlike other businesses, it's not only tax that, mm -hmm. that a, a consumer or developer is paying extra. We, like, for, take for example, in Haryana, we have, it's not only the tax aspect. We have things like EDC, IDC, external development charge, and, you know, infrastructure development charges, which also play a very, uh, which, you know, form a very large, uh, significant percentage mm -hmm. of the project cost so just by uh, by having GST it will not I don't think it's going to significantly impact the the cost of housing because there are a lot of other type of expenditures that developers have to make in order to get a, a land uh, to get it uh, to get the government to provide proper infrastructure and those those other charges like EDC, IDC, as I mentioned, are not really part of the tax ambit. Those yes. are outside of that. Absolutely. But but if you calculate the percentage, they form a pretty significantly large cost in the project. Okay. And and one more thing I would but just like to add is that it's not uniform across India. Like for example, in Haryana you have EDC, you have IDC. In Noida you have a totally different system. Mm. So you know it's not only GST, but they have to have some sort of a if you want real estate in particular to be a sort of a regulated industry, you know, with proper pricing and proper price benchmarks all over the country, you have to introduce a system I think for these other Solomon, things. You well. raised a very important point. So here you're talking about a unified market, but for real right. estate, it's not going to be applicable in the current status. I right. mean, GST is not going to make that happen. There's no. just too many different rules and regulations for right. real estate in every state. Mahesh Jaising, just this, if you could quickly sum up what is it that the industry should be careful about uh, as, as legislators are going to get together and really come out with a fine print? What should the industry lobby for, I mean, to, to protect their interests within this whole change to, towards GST? 
Yeah, I think uh, what industry on the real estate sector should lobby for is uh, there is a particular provision that says that you know the credit of construction related services will not be available uh, against output leasing activity so i'm moving away from residential mm -hmm. to uh, but looking at real estate as a whole that sure. today if you construct a mall and thereafter you're going to be leasing out the mall to occupants mm -hmm. the lease rentals will clearly attract a gst but the current rules is is sticking sort of the old wine and the new bottle and uh, not permitting a credit of construction related uh, taxes against output uh, lease rental taxes. Wow. So while GST is meant to be not a tax on tax, it's supposed to address a cascading effect. I would say from the real estate sector, our number one ask as an industry should be to allow a complete, uh, you know, a pass through of taxes, even if it is for construction of an immobile property that's subsequently leased out. I think that's the biggest issue uh, for the sector. Abhinav, you agree? That's the big highlight? Um, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Mm -hmm. But for me, a bigger concern is the overall rate again. You again, know, overall rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where? You think 18% is comfortable? I mean, obviously, it's then bringing it down from its current 22%. But do you think 18 would be possible? Because one is hearing more in, in terms of keeping it to 20%. I mean, let, let's ask Mr. Kothari. Mr. Kothari, where do you think it will settle, the fine print of on rate? I think it is between 18 and 20. I don't think it will be more than 20. It could be more probably the standard rate could be 18 percent. Uh, but there are certain products on which they have to have a lower rate, which is like food product and all essential item. So therefore, rate below 18 percent is uh, not feasible. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of pressure on the government to keep the rate low so that there is no inflationary impact. But for real estate, if we look at if it is a priority in the, uh, sector and the government says that they have to provide a housing to all by a certain year, in that case, they have to look at in a totality as what has been mentioned, can not only just GST, but other taxes and levies, which has to be considered and then they have to be treated on that basis and have a tax, uh, total tax implication on that and decide the policy direction. Fair enough. Rohit, put that final word to you because yes, uh, as Mr. Kothari says, if the government is serious about meeting its objective of affordable housing for everyone in India, um, it goes way beyond GST, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, also remember that uh, other than GST, mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, you have a significant loss of taxes from, from, from in, in Mumbai in particular from Octro and things of that nature, which will be difficult to make up uh, from a local body perspective. So I think there will be a significant chance of them increasing other taxes to basically make up for this loss. And these are the charges that have to be factored into costing as well, right? So for example, if open land taxes are in dispute, I mean the whole plethora of charges that basically are currently being paid, which, are, which the industry is contesting. Uh, and most of the charges may come up in the future and they may, may actually creep up over the, over the next few years if bodies actually can't seem to you know, meet their bills. Uh, there was debate yesterday actually once the GST bill was being passed about whether uh, you know, local bodies can become more sort of self-sufficient and issue bonds and things of that nature. But I think the efficiency of these uh, local bodies will now be under greater scrutiny and uh, rightly so. Well, it's clear that the sector which is aligned with more than 250 other sectors will definitely enjoy the indirect impact. And hopefully that impact will be positive. The direct impact of GST though, as our panelists have said, will only be known once you have that rate or a finger on that rate. I'm going to thank all my panelists here. Uh, Rohit Podar, thank you very much. Prashant Solomon, pleasure to have you with me. Mahesh Jaising, Abhinav Joshi, and Nihal Kothari. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. I'm going to wrap out here. GST, interesting times ahead. Well, excitement, really. The world is right now looking at India, bringing in money to India. This is one of the growing economies, and this was a big hurdle to be crossed. And hopefully the legislators will get it right, states will come on board, and the operational issues will get sorted out. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye.